Mr. Freddy Spencer. <laughs> it's a great pleasure for me to meet you here in Austria, in Schwanenstadt. Have you ever been here? Uh, no. Uh, the only time that I've been to Austria is uh, for the Austrian Grand Prix at Salzburg Ring. And uh, so really the last time that I was in Austria was in May of 1986. 1986. Yeah, yeah, for the Austrian Grand Prix. And uh, so it's, it's been a while. Uh, you know, so it's it's always a pleasure for me. Uh, you know, obviously '86, the last time was riding a Honda, um, but it's one of my my favorite countries, and and I tell you why, it's because um, the first time I came to uh, to Austria was in May of '82 for my first European Grand Prix uh, with the new HRC team, and I remember. Um, just the reception from all the Austrian fans and and uh, the enthusiasm in Salzburg what a beautiful setting a very unusual track um, and so I've I just had um, even though in the race the 82 race I didn't finish uh, but I still had a great experience it's wonderful uh, of course I would like to know a really a lot but uh, some guys really asked me to ask you yeah. Why did you stop your career in 1986? Well, as I've, I've actually talked many times, yeah. um, is my wrist problems, you know, and, and it was just never, never the same. Uh, and, you know, in some respects, really after 1985, it just was not the same. And I had operations on my wrist and on my neck both, and, and I lost really the strength in my right arm is what would happen. And my arm would collapse under braking. And um, so the Spanish Grand Prix in 86, um, I was leading and um, with about 11 second lead. And I came in because I lost all the feeling and strength in my right hand and, and arm. And, and I couldn't, it just, I couldn't squeeze a break. And so it was just a, an unfortunate thing. Uh, but it's like I've always said, is, is uh, you can look at life as the disappointments, you can look at life at the blessings. And, and for me, the opportunity to win world championships and races and and uh, really 19 great years of racing you know leading up to the issues I had beginning in 86 so um, I, I really can't complain it's it's um, but I love riding I, I love doing these events and I think it's really important uh, which motorcycle in your career which racing motorcycle did you impress most well for sure the 1985 NSR 500 along with the 250 from 85, the NSR 250, but really the 85 500, and the reason why it was, we had had the, the year before, the first V4, was with the gas tank on the bottom and the pipes over the top, and, yeah. and it really, it, it, it was one of those bikes that either worked or it didn't, and we had a lot of problems, and so they went to the more conventional, you know, setup beginning in 1985, and, and that foundation of that bike is what really pushed along the the success all the way up through 2001 of the NSR 500. You know, you look at at basically 16 years of cha 13 championships in 16 years, and so it, it was an incredible bike. And, and I was kind of there on the ground floor with the original development, and we we um, we just started off and we worked hard and we made a good bike from the beginning. Uh. What was the biggest moment in your racing career? Is there one? Well, it was it was a moment that was not on the racetrack. Um, it was a moment that I walked into Mr. Honda's home and uh, sat on a Wednesday uh, afternoon in September of 1983. And uh, it was actually September 7th, to be exact, 19, 1983. And... It was that Wednesday after I won the championship on Sunday at Imola on September 4th. And the reason why was is because I've always, you know, racing and winning is one thing, and, and I feel very privileged. But the real privilege for me is the opportunities I've been given to share with people and help them not only with my dreams but with theirs. And so when I walked into Mr. Honda's home um, that day on Wednesday, and he put his hands up on my shoulders and he said, Domo Argato, he said, thank you. 
it was that dream because he had always wanted to win the 500 World Championship. And so to, to share that with him, with, to me, was much more important than any race win. Um, and so to share the moments with my dad when I was a kid, uh, and, and that's what makes these events so important, right? Is that, and I have always appreciated that, even through the good times and the struggles, is, is that it's really what we share through motorcycling and the human aspect that matters the most to me. The winning eye is great, but if you did that alone, it means nothing, you know? Great. Great. It's a team. It is. It is. Yeah. Wonderful. And maybe just short, what was the baddest, the worst moment in motorcycle racing for you? Well, probably sure that day in Spain in May of 86, you know, when I was leading after, you know, working all winter, I was in the best shape of my career. Yeah. Really, I was even better shape in the beginning of 86 than I was at the end of 85. And it had been a hard winter because my problems with my hand, I didn't ride a motorcycle for eight months. And then to come back and I kind of, and I've always been one that really trusts feelings, you know, and so I, I kind of felt that that moment that it was maybe all over. And, uh, and it kind of was, you know, and I went through 10 years where I should have, you know, that should have retired then, you know, hindsight's always 2020, it's always easier to look back, but that's what life is, you know, you have great moments and you learn, And some of the things, you know, makes you stronger and, and you move on. And, and like I said, all these years later, to be able to come and share it with, these, with, with everyone here in, in Austria in different places and, and you feel that, that connection, uh, you know, we're all human. We all do well and we all make mistakes, you know. But, but for sure that day was probably really the toughest from the standpoint of that I kind of felt it was over. And it was, you know. I can understand. Uh, I tried to understand, but, but I really, as you told the first time, I got the impression it must have been really a cruel moment. Yeah, yeah, it was hard. Well, because, you know, racing has always been just something very natural to me. Yeah. And so even that day, even though I hadn't ridden a motorcycle, up until that Friday to start the first Grand Prix, I didn't test or nothing for eight months. I go out. I get pole position, new life yeah. record, first day. So riding has always been very easy. Yeah. Not, not, not easy because I work hard. You know, I, I worked hard in my yard. I rode five hours a day when I was a kid, five days a week, no matter the rain, snow, cold. My mom used to I'd dress in jackets. I'd be so cold, I couldn't even feel my hands. But so right riding is, you know, I worked hard and combined with a natural ability, you know, a, so those two together, you know, gave me these incredible opportunities. But, you know, that's what life is, right? That day it was, it was gone, you know, just you never know. Uh, in, in the presence, uh, American writers, because yeah. American writers always were in Europe big heroes because of their style <laughs> and their feeling. But nowadays it seems to be more difficult for for American riders to perform in the highest classes I guess due to the electronics I'm not sure it's about electronics because electronics is same for everybody um, I think it's more complicated than that and this is this is reason why is when you look at this the opportunities for young riders in the US is very few And so you only have a few riders that make it to the top level. And, and if you look at how many of those make it to the very elite level, it's always a small group. I mean, look at now. Look at the very top level of MotoGP. There's three guys, four guys, you know, of course, Mark, Jorge, Danny, and Valentino. And so basically it's those four. But look how many races there are in the world. So the problem in the U.S. Is, is that when I came along, there was so much opportunity. We had so much club racing. We had support. Um, you know, we, we, I, I know I'd race flat track racing Friday, Saturday night, road racing Saturdays and Sundays, same weekend. Nowadays, there's very few races. There's not a lot of support at the very basic level. So like I said, instead of a 1,000 riders getting an opportunity and you narrow that down to maybe only – 50 that make it to the top of the professional level in the U.S., and then out of that 50, you may get four or five that can go to the world level. Now it's 10% of that. And so you're lucky to find one good rider, you know, because it's just not that easy at the top level. 
you know, you're racing against every, you know, they're smart at the top levels, talented, driven, drive, all of these things. So I think it's a fundamental problem of just the lack of support of motorcycle racing due to economics, due to opportunities at the very basic level. And so until that can change, it's going to be difficult to to bring along a group like you saw in the late 70s and 80s with us, you know, that that we we kind of made it to the very top and then you get then you get a chance and 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 sometimes it just runs in cycles like that you know where you get a group you know right now with the spanish you know they have an incredible uh farm system um the other thing that's happened is everybody is kind of you know you look at mark mark's a great dirt track rider you know he practices sliding and and um so i think it's it's as much the fundamental issue of the support system lacking in the u.s and until that changes, uh, it's going to be, you know, you may get one that comes along once in a generation, you know. And your heart is still for motorcycle racing. Well, in my heart is motorcycling. You know, I, I yeah, I, one of the great things I get to do is to go along and, like I said, do these classic events and to share, you know, motorcycling. I think what's, in, what's important about these events is it shows the tradition of the sport, not only the race bikes, but the manufacturers the collectors that come along with the passion that provide like these are two beautiful bikes this is my 1983 bike i won at daytona this bike i rc30 i rode my first time back in aiming sue bike in 1990 and how, how was the feeling to ride oh it's great now? it's great it's yeah. just like i it hadn't just like i'd been on it yesterday for me yeah, yeah. oh yeah because i did the development work for that bike like 30 years ago oh yeah just feel the same. oh yeah yeah great. yeah for me because riding that's the great thing about riding a motorcycle and that's why i said it's about motorcycling and, and I have a school in Paul Ricard um, at, at the circuit there that I, I work with 4G. I get to, like I said, do these classic events and appearances. And for me, it's just a real privilege to go around sharing motorcycling and what we share through motorcycling. Mr. Spencer, thank you very much. My and I hope you win today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this adds all for fun. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.